What's going on guys? Welcome to another UFC career highlight video. Today we take a look at El Loco Manuel Torres, who is an exceptional fighter with charisma to boot. He's dominated regionally in Mexico mixed martial arts and has shined, becoming his best form with his recent UFC performances, landing brutal knockouts in every opportunity he's had. The Mexico card serves as his platform to launch, honestly, Torres to new heights, equivalent or honestly even more than almost every Mexican fighter currently on the roster. Without further ado, let's take a look at the career highlights of Manuel El Loco Torres. Oh, Till's out! It's over! No, it's over! It's over! It's what I'm saying, boy! Oh! He gets dropped in. It's over! It's over, Munoz! Oh, my God! Manuel Torres was an absolute madman in his regional days. He debuted back in 2014 for regional mixed martial arts in Mexico, but you can still see that unorthodox wildness that you saw from his youth in his current style, yet he's done a masterful job through training and experience becoming selective with the one-hit knockout nukes that he has available to him. That paired with his god-given chin that has been tested and passed with flying colors, we see this superstar potential waiting in the shadows. When he debuted competing in his youth 10 years ago, He's only 28, so competing around 18 years old, he'd finished six straight opponents, starting to build a resume of what we know him for now as the first round finisher, with again, a wild style that overburdens any non-competitive regional fighter and overwhelming and getting victories rather quickly in his career. So at 6-0, he would decide to take it a little more serious taking on competitors with more background in mixed martial arts and having more success as pro MMA fighters. Torres continued his winning streak, notching two more victories in a single night and clinching the beatdown featherweight title through consecutive back-to-back -back fights. However, the night also marked a significant shift for Torres as he encountered his first decision win, albeit by split decision. Nevertheless, adversity soon struck. In his relentless pursuit of wild striking exchanges, Torres found himself vulnerable to his opponent's takedowns. Rather than focusing on defense, he opted to threatened with submissions in an attempt to secure victory early. This strategy backfired when he fell victim to a Matt McGarcia heel hook, resulting in his first defeat in under a minute via submission. Undeterred, Torres found redemption in his next fight in 2019. However, during the fight after that at Circus in Tijuana against Carlos Calvo Calvo, history repeated itself. Despite attempting to lock in an anaconda choke on a Calvo takedown attempt, Torres once again found himself in a precarious position, even with the anaconda looking to be deep at some points. He took Calvo back, but this time Calvo capitalized on Torres' vulnerability, executing a beautiful roll to secure one of the legs and securing a knee bar submission win. This marked Torres' second first round submission loss in just three fights. But Manuel Torres would get back on the horse and he would have a run of fights that had a lot of time in between them. In 2019, he would suffer the loss to Calvo Calvo. He'd fight in 2020, two fights in 2021, fight per year from 2022 to his current fight today with Chris Duncan. But nonetheless, he would submit Daniel Vega in 2020 and then suffer an injury that forced him to miss about a year and three months to get into UWC 27. During this time, he was practicing during this time, he was practicing his jiu-jitsu at one of the premier jiu-jitsu gyms in the world at Entrum in Mexico. And he was able to develop some skills on the mat that would prevent him from suffering defeats the same way that he saw previous. So in his next fight against Carlos Canada on UWC on UFC Fight Pass, with a real opportunity at getting a contender series shot, Michael Morales is one of the other fighters that was showcased on this UWC promotion. And Manuel El Loco Torres would not disappoint as submitting Carlos Canada on Canada's first attempt, cinching in a guillotine choke and getting it standing up, which is very, very tough to do. You can see that Manuel Torres was putting everything he had into the submission and he would force Carlos to tap at 25 seconds of round number one. And this impressive performance would land him in the UFC and he'd go on a run of first round finishes. His first contender series fight against Colton England, he would come in as the underdog for the lightweight bout. Colton, a very promising prospect at 9-3 and three during the fight, Manuel Torres, his stand-up looked like his stand-up does, very powerful, very wild. And then an eye poke when leaving the clinch would cause Colton to cover up and Manuel Torres would pierce the guard and finish England in the first round at 2-10, leading him into a fight with Frank Camacho. 
Camacho, an extremely tough UFC fighter with a veteran history, and this fight would be a wild exchange. Manuel Torres would be hit with one twos, but he would land the most of the damage, almost putting Frank Camacho out a couple times before sealing the deal at 327 of the first round. This was an absolutely wonderful fight. It earned Manuel Torres a UFC performance of the night bonus. It'd be at first on his career, and I don't doubt the first of many going into the future. They would get him on a UFC fight night in Vegas, Vittori versus Cannoneer, and he would represent on the main card, taking on Nicholas Mota, who is a great Muay Thai fighter, a stand-up fighter that would be a great test for Manuel Torres. Torres would do the same as he's done before, putting together some of his best performances in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. He would sleep Nicholas Mota with one of the most perfect elbows you can see in mixed martial arts. It would shut Mota's lights off immediately, and this was while Torres was actually eating some shots in the bout. This would mark Torres' second performance of the night bonus in back-to-back -back UFC fights, and honestly, back-to-back -back UFC performance that he was actually eligible for the performance of the night. He wasn't going to get it on a Dana White Contender Series fight, obviously. So Manuel Torres is looking really, really good going into this fight with Chris Duncan. It's going to be in his home country of Mexico, so I don't doubt the fans are going to be behind him. Let me know how far you think El Loco can go with all the skills that he has. Still training at great gyms in Mexico, still training in Vegas, getting great looks from different guys, training, learning. How far do you think he can go? But that'll do it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, smash the like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.